everybody's talking about FAA guidelines and rules and many can't agree on certain things but FAA has issued some rules and some guidelines and that's where the gray area comes and that's where disagreements come as well. So I'm going to go over all the rules and all the guidelines that are issued by FAA and in my opinion it is best to abide by those rules and even those guidelines. So let's see what they are. The first one is that you must register your drone with FAA if it weighs more than 0.55 pounds, which is 250 grams, which is almost any drone or RC plane out there. So you must register your drone or your RC plane with FAA and you cannot fly anything that weighs over 55 pounds. That's the limit. The second one is that you must label your drone or your RC plane with the registration number that you get from registering your drone. So you must put it somewhere on your plane. You can put it under the battery compartment or on the side or somewhere on the plane so that if you happen to crash your plane or uh, some, some incident were to happen, they can basically trace it back to you. The third one is that you must always maintain line of sight with your drone. You can't fly your drone two, three miles away, which is possible these days. Mavic Pro flies about 4.2 to 4.3 miles. So this rule implies that you must have line of sight with your drone and you always have it in your sight. The next one is not to fly within five miles of any airport. Now, if you are to fly within five miles of an airport, or if you have a need to fly within five miles of an airport, it is possible. Uh, you can call the tower. You can actually, you know, there's no number to call the tower. You can actually call the uh, airport manager and have it transfer you to the tower. And you can let them know that you will be flying your drone within five miles of the airport. You must give them your location, your time the when you will be flying the plane the maximum altitude you'll be flying at so you must give these three things to the tower and they will not usually say that they approve of you flying they are not allowed to say the word approved if they do not disagree with you flying or they do not object that is an approval for you to fly so basically that's how it works just call them up let them know that i am going to be three miles uh, southwest of the airport I'm going to be flying at 2 p.m. and my maximum altitude is going to be 200 feet and if they don't object you can carry on with the flight now I recommend recording that conversation with the camera or with the voice memo so you have some proof that you did call the tower and there were no objections the next one is that you're not to fly a drone from a moving vehicle you cannot fly a drone while driving the car or even as a passenger in the car. I've seen some videos on YouTube where people are going from city to city in a drone and they are in the passenger seat but they're flying the drone. They have the line of sight. That's their reasoning for um, you know, making that flight and that video. But in my opinion and uh, by FFA guidelines, I believe that is not according to their, uh, their policy so you should not fly from a moving vehicle here are some places you cannot fly your drone number one is that you cannot fly your drone in washington dc it's a no-fly zone in the entire washington dc you can't fly there second one is that you cannot fly your drone in a national park there have been some incidents where um, a guy actually lowered his drone in a yellowstone national park right in the middle of a geyser and the drone was irrecoverable uh, there was another incident uh, where a drone actually crashed into the lake at a national park and the diver had to go and recover the drone. So because of these incidents, National Park Services has issued uh, a law that you cannot fly your drone within the boundaries of a national park. And I've seen some videos where people unknowingly are actually flying their drone in a national park and they post a video on YouTube and later on they get a phone call either from a Yellowstone National Park or some other national park. I've seen quite a few videos. So they a phone call and the ranger is just asking them about the time of the flight the day of the flight you know the location of the flight and stuff like that and once they give out that information they charge them with hefty fines or even summons to appear in the court there was this one incident where a guy was charged with $1,050 fine 
to fly in Yellowstone National Park. So national parks are no-fly zones. Some state parks are also becoming no-fly zones. Uh, usually they will issue their own statements where you cannot fly so you must check with state parks and other locations where you cannot fly the next one is that you cannot fly over stadiums or crowds of people or live games you can't fly over super bowl or a baseball game uh it's illegal um you can't fly over crowds of people i've seen videos where people are flying their drones in either new york or la they are flying over buildings they are flying over uh crowds of people uh, it's a big no-no. You are not supposed to do that. The next one is that you cannot fly around or over hospitals and you cannot fly near any emergency operations whether it's a medical emergency or a fire or it has to do with the fire department. So you cannot interfere with any uh, emergency operations. And you cannot fly over 400 feet. 400 feet is the ceiling to fly any drone or any RC plane. And the next one is very, very self-explanatory. It is uh, pretty easy to follow as well. You cannot fly your drone under any influence of alcohol or drugs. So if you're under any influence of any substance, you cannot fly your drone. And the last one is that you can always check uh, where you can fly or where you cannot fly using an app uh, which is released by FAA. It's called Before You Fly. It's the, with the B, the letter for you fly. Uh, you can get the app on Android or on iPhone. Um, but the app actually is pretty terrible. Um, I downloaded the app, I was looking through and it, it's not very user friendly, but it does tell you how far you are from your nearest airport. There are some airports that haven't been operated in last 10 to 20 years and they are in that app as well. Basically, you have to look into the app and see which airport is active and if you are within five miles of that airport and if you are and if you really need to fly in that location, you need to call the tower and get permission. So fly responsibly, fly within guidelines, fly within rules and I think you will be all right.